Good morning. So um, yesterday uh, I tried to record some stuff and it went terrible. Um, I just went round in circles and got nowhere and ended up cancelling the recording and uh, doing some work instead. Um, but then last night um, I had another go um, at looking to see how to get um, monitoring of um, Windows deactivating and working and stuff like that. And eventually I found some very valuable documentation. Oops, wrong one. The actual spec DBUS, which was immensely helpful. Um, it's got tons of great info in it. I couldn't find it before, but somehow I found it. Um, and in particular, it was this, um, the Dbus monitoring become monitor. Um, seeing that that actually applies to any connection, as long as it's never been used before, um, made a huge difference. So um, with that, I was able to basically reintroduce in my little go dbus client test um, this call which is very similar which is basically the same as in the monitor example um, where it's connecting to the bus object and then calling the become monitor with some rules and a zero is the flag. There's a default that hasn't been used, but you have to set to zero at the moment. So this is this has always worked, um, and you could do the notifications. Um, uh, here, all I had to do was make sure that I had not used the um, the new connection to my um, to the Ali D bus. Um, set up a rule which used this format of saying what type it is, what interface I'm looking at, and the member, uh, which I got from the XML here, this, and then looking at the deactivate, wherever that is, down here. Um, that was it really. Uh, so, and then I could run it. So as you can see, um, I was doing some stuff here. So if I run that example, so it connects up and it, it's interesting that it does this. That could be a bit annoying, but we'll see what happens. Um, but if I go into a accessible window, so it's this one here, um, and as soon as I come out of it, you'll see an event. And that event is a deactivate event, which is exactly what I need um, on this interface. Um, and it has information in it, uh, such as the title, which is in that case, star, unsaved document, um, and some other empty stuff, um, which I'm sure that at some point I'll create a struct to deal with. So that's great. Um, so that means that I can encode, start building up um, some monitoring of window events, which I need to then say, okay, um, you've just lost connection to a window where we were monitoring keystrokes, stop monitoring them. And then the other events will be when we get a focus, um, uh, we can then start monitoring keystrokes and looking for snippets to expand and stuff like that. We have to be really careful and to, you know, keep it um, as efficient as possible. Um, we don't want to be monitoring everything. We only want to monitor stuff that is relevant. Um, so um, that's, that's a huge step, um, but we need to actually start using it. Um, I think what I'll do 
is I'll now basically take this uh, basic code um, and start building out the uh, go um, the daemon side of things for Snippy Pixie. Um, so what we'll do what should we take um, what we'll do is we'll just throw this off to six and then I will get snippet pixie wherever that is I've lost it down here um okay so now we need to do some stuff uh, let's see we have auto expander this is where we're possibly going to be doing this stuff um at least for the beginning and then we might want to uh, change things up later so i'm going to just close off cli dbus yeah all cli stuff which one's that it's daemon yeah, probably not gonna just get rid of them all for the moment the main is okay Okay, for the moment. But we will see. So, actually, I want the Daemon's D bus so that I can check out what goes on in the new service. Right, okay, yeah, so we're connecting to the D-Bus, which generates a connection. We add it to the service uh, as a reference. Yeah, and then back in the main, we ensure that we close that connection as needed. Okay. This is where I'm going to have to do a couple of different things then. So, at the moment, we don't, okay, I prepared. So at the moment, we're not actually connecting, connecting anything, um, but we need to. So let's do a couple of things. We're going to need um, a couple of different things. We need to monitor Windows stuff. Um, plus controls. In fact, what I should do, I should open up the last 
a stable version of Varla and Snippy Pixie. All right, here we go. So, yeah, there's a couple of different things we're doing here. So the deactivate stuff, which is what I'm working on just now. We're looking for deactivate, minimize, shade, lower and close, and also desktop destroy. So basically any one of these are reasons to stop listening for window events. Um, and they're all basically calling this function on window deactivate, which does basically is clean up, uh, deregister stuff and whatnot. So what we'll do here is we'll basically mimic that. So we need all these. I'll need to double check what the uh, the format is for these members. Uh, but minimize and shade, lower and close. Okay, these are all things that you basically lose focus on. Um, and then. Yeah. Okay. We will carry on with that. Okay. Minimize, shade, lower, close and stuff. So these are, we'll just call these window, window events, basically, because that's all they are. They are all on the window. And we're definitely going to do different things depending on what's doing the eventing. So the on focus stuff is definitely uh, going to be handled differently. And looking at the signal. I might get away with using a single device event listener. Because in theory, in theory, the event uh, what we're looking for. this fifty six. And details, just the one. Look for event again. I'll just whip through it. All right, that's key events. We'll come back to them another time. That's button events. Uh, 
Okay, that didn't give me what I expected. Okay, I might have to look at other documentation for this then. Uh, what have we got? Yeah, this is where I've got stuff. Um, okay, what I'm going to need... <sighs> going to basically need an enum. Not an enum. It's junked. keep seeing enums everywhere on this thing. Okay, I'm going to hit it myself anyway. All right, what I should do... I just get this stuff put it across. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to have to do something similar to this. Let's just create a dbus connection. Uh, but we'll call it um, event listener. Okay. And then Ah oh, yeah, we need to do all this setup, don't we? Forgot about that. So this is okay. So what we're going to do here uh, is connect to the, the session bus. If there's any issues, Let's 
you do this. A different well, there should be a different type of error message and then there's um probably use this elsewhere. that. I shouldn't do that either. I'm going to have to fix that up later. Oh, actually I can. Because we set a logger, that's fine. Uh, right, okay, so what do I have to do here? That. Oh, hold on a minute. That's all I need to do. Okay, so that means we've got past that. I want to use the same format that I normally do for clean clean count. So where's my other one here? Oh, yeah, I don't need that. I can do this. So it's not clean. I don't get any uh, formatting errors and stuff there. Okay, so that means that that initial connection, which basically is there to service this, which is to get the address, um, should work. So we, in theory, get the address of the uh, LED bus. Take this. Oops. 
Oops, what was my message there? Yeah, that's quite useful. Okay, failed to get any bus address. Okay, that's really important, so we do need to bail out for that. Um, don't need to do that. And now comes the fun bit. So here connect into the D bus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do that one. That's the same, isn't it really? Okay. Do that. In fact, we should call that Rent. listener con Rent listener. Okay, so we now have a reference to that saved away in the uh, struct uh, which we are returning. But we're not closing it because we need to use it. So back in main, we're going to set up the listeners. So this is getting a little bit a little bit clunky here, but we can refactor it later. So we're getting to the point here where we've called this new auto expander, um, which is just basically setting up all the stuff that we want. We're going to end up putting in another um, listener here um, for the um, keystrokes. But we will come to that later. Uh, so we now need to do the stuff we had in the example here. And so it's not the rules. And doing things with it. So, well, for the moment, we can just do this so that we can see that it's working. And then we will fix it up. So we've got that. We've just set that to close. We might use that for loop in a bit. Or maybe not. We'll see. Okay, so we have deactivate. 
That's one rule. Need about another three or four. Back to the XML. We want minimize because then we lose focus. We want close. Desktop destroy. We might need another line in a minute. Destroy sounds like a good one. I should probably have that as well. Not sure I had that first time round. Uh, deactivate, we've got lower. Got anything else? Shade. Should be, I think, on there. So that's all the basics for losing access. Now, did I not have destroy? Desktop destroy. I had close, lower shade, minimize, but I didn't have destroy for some reason. Hmm. I didn't leave a reason for that, so we'll see. Maybe I just missed it. Now, the ones that are really important are these two, focus and the object exchanged insert. So this is when you click into a control and that can um, basically emit events, because if you get the focus, it generally works. Um, but in some scenarios, like if you've gone back to a window, uh, you may not get the focus event because it's already focused. And so if you like alt tab between a couple of windows, so then I have to kind of, I can only then sort of grab that focus when you do something like um, click a key to get the snippet started as such or do any kind of typing um, so that's what that is um, and it also doubles up as being the way that we monitor um, it kind of just kicks off the uh, listening for keys uh, which we don't have here yet so yeah, we'll come, we'll go find that in a minute. Um, so yeah, so we need to find out how, what the rules are for that. So focus, that would be an interesting one. Interesting. 
event focus signal name focus Hmm, okay. So that's a slightly different format. It's unlike here. Oh, I suppose it's the same. It's the same. So that's in theory the member. Okay. So just focus, focus. Let's give that a go. So instead of event window, we're doing event focus. And we're looking for member focus. Probably don't need that member bit, but we will see. Um, and then we want uh, object stuff. So mouse window, here we go. All right, object. So object. Uh, what was it? Text changed. Insert. Text changed. Hmm. There's a uh... difference there. Well, I have to be careful about this one because we may get way too much information here. I take it there's no insert. Row inserted, column inserted. Yeah, so they know not what we want. Okay, well, we'll give it a go. We'll see what we get. changed. Okay. So here we're going to do what to expand uh, Event listener, and we're going to start listening in theory.
I could have done errors. Error F, can I? A bit cleaner. Maybe do that. I get the wrong thing there. Oh, what does it return? It does return an error. So why is it complaining then? Hmm. Okay. Although I suppose it's not actually giving me an error, is it? Don't need it anyway. We know it's going to be a zero for the moment. Okay, then I guess, I mean, if I change that to a V, then what? No difference. All right, let's not muck about this then. 
I thought I was going to do something clever there, but I can't. We will, because I don't know enough about it, and I will have to work it out some other time. I thought I could do unwrapped errors. But, that's so something to learn another time. Because, I haven't really got time. Okay. So we're going to make a channel here. Um, now, why is this all complaining? We're not doing C somewhere else, are we? Oh, here we are. <laughs> Okay, got to be careful here. Right, so this is going to be called... Um, should we call this event? Buffer? Yeah. Um, and then we're going to do... Auto Expander dot event listener eavesdrop on that event buffer. So we're just listening to it. We're not going to do any kind of response, um, which gives us the ability to do that, basically. If we say that we're not going to react to it, um, we're not going to stop an event from propagating, all this kind of stuff, you get some ability to listen to it. Um, there's kind of permissions, things, depending on what you want to do with the bus. Um, and we're not not going for anything like security conscious, conscious, conscious. Uh, we're going for accessibility stuff, so we should be okay. <clears throat> I hope. Um, so we're going to eavesdrop. So apply with anything. It's got no response. No, it's void effectively. That's good. Uh, right. That needs to go away. Um, and now we need, in theory, Do we, right, before I go any further, is there something I need to do to stop being a, an event listener? Don't think so. Yeah, we should be good because I mean, well, I've already tested it anyway. But it's our bus, it's our accessibility bus for our desktop, so we should be good. 
the user running the uh, the app. Um, it's their own stuff. Well, there's nothing here about having to close it off. So I guess just killing the connection because it's single. Be okay. We'll see. Uh, so right, what we're going to end up doing is something like this. Um, looking for the event buffer. An event. Um, and we're going to print that event. I might have to cast that at some point to get something useful. Now, I don't want it to just stop here because that's going to just go forever until I cancel the app. So I kind of need to stick this in a thread. So I kind of need to do this. I need to have a go funk and let it do its own thing. It's doing this kind of stuff here. So this is what I was wondering whether I needed to do something like that. Um, but I don't think I do. Think we're good. Defer funk cancel. So that's all just canceling out. I don't know why. We'll see. Um, right, so I'm basically just doing this. Um, I am basically going into for loop. Um, and I think at some point I might. Um, I have to have a couple of these. Okay. So in theory, we're going to just start getting lots of events bat out when we do this now, which is going to be interesting. Obviously, that's got to change. Um, but let's get back to here. Nope. Here. Yeah. Okay, let's do a make clean, make, taking its time on snippet pixie D because that's the new stuff. So in theory, I'm just going to, actually I'm going to sort that over there because I've got slightly more width on it there. I'm not going to muck about with it. So, if I do, oh, there we go. Failed to start monitoring events. 
cool to become monitor has wrong args. ASI expected as oh that would be that you went okay right uh, so let's do that then let's just make sure this is correct um bar um Event listener flags event oops zero. Nice and explicit. Let's make it and run it. There we go. Right. So these are the things I'm going to have to be careful about. I'm going to have to be it's interesting that we get that kind of stuff. It's not something I've asked for. Anyway, so when we go over here, nothing happens because Alacrity isn't accessible. Uh, but when I come out of this text editor, in theory, I'm going to get some events. I did. Got to deactivate. Um, and if I close it, so we got deactivate there. Interesting, and then a focus on this window. And then it's gone. Right, okay, so here's the insert. And that's an extra piece there. So I wonder if I can filter for that. And why? Why? It's interesting. Why did it do the insert? That's going to be annoying. OK, let's look at um, the docs there for. Stuff, right, so there he is. I saw it earlier. Go to the top. And I will look for Ember equals Donk. Okay. All right, it might be arg zero or arg one, maybe. OK, 
Okay, let's try that. So we got insert. Um, so here, I should be able to do arg zero equals insert. Although I didn't test anything else to see if that came through. Mm. Okay. But if we still get it, that's a bonus, isn't it? Okay. Cancel that off. Make it again. See what we do, actually. Close that out. Uh, um... Actually, no, let's, you're going to miss half the stuff if I do that. Let's do this. Um, and then I will just make this a bit smaller. I don't know if that's going to cover. I think you'll be all right. I haven't got a preview. Okay, so I've just rebuilt it, haven't I? So... Because I'm going to open a window. Oh. Okay. Right. Text editor. Resize that down a little bit. It says it does the right keys. Let's do that. Okay, so if we lose focus, we've got the deactivate. Go back in. Do I start type anything? We've got an insert. And we've got the S twice. So that would be. That would be key press and key release. I'm not seeing much in that data that says that. Is this going to have an index on it then? So if I do S again, that's interesting. I can see the, the data there. I can see that. I've just got done deactivate. Um, so that was at index zero. I got an S. For some reason, I'm going to hit twice. I presume because it's key press and key release. But now it's at index one. If I do P, that's at one. I'm not going to trigger because that'll, oh, I've got snippet pixie actually running. But if I do like A, That's on index two. That's good. Oh, it's interesting that. That is good data. Hmm. But anyway, that's working. Although we're not getting the focus. If I do file 
Yeah, so these things all do focus. I have to be really careful about that. Streaming through. If I do new, I've got a focus there. Right, and we got text changed. Hmm. There's definitely going to be some stuff to decipher here, but I presume that array of stuff is going to give me an object which is going to be useful. But there's lots going on in that dbus. Uh, anyway, so let's close off that. On. And if I close this off, we've got to deactivate on the window that we were interested in. We wouldn't find a text field in here with focus, so it would be good. Yeah, this thing, when we do this text changed insert um, and the focus, what we'll end up doing is looking through the object that we're given, more we'll basically the window, and seeing if there's an editable text that's got focus before we do anything else. And then we grab a focus for that. So these things we'll kind of fly by until we find something we need. And then we start monitoring keystrokes for real. We'll have to have a flag for that. Okay, and then we close it off when we get the act deactivate. It's interesting we're not getting like close. Okay, well, anyway, that's good. Um, so that's a good start. But we need to do things with that data. Uh, we need to decipher what we're getting. Um, so we need to know... what data it is and then we can stuff it into uh, into a struct um, okay close that off for the moment don't need that for the moment let's get rid of some of these um constants keep for that for the moment uh what have we got here i'll get sure that for the moment Yeah, I can't use that. That's been useful. 
get short of some of these being things here. This. Get short for the moment. Okay, so I want to have a quick look at our event actually. Ben listener private. Nope. Event listener. Why did I skip that? Hmm. Not super useful. I might have to just go look at the um I might actually go look at the Valadox in a minute because that's super useful. And there we go, that's what we want. Sort of. Yeah, it's all converting stuff. Yeah, I think this is when I, when I was looking last night as well, I kind of went, oh, okay, right. <laughs> that is arc zero as well. Okay, That's the detail. That's good. So I'm on the right path. Right, okay. I'm going to, there's a couple of things I want to do here, so, I'll get shot of that for the moment. I've got that bookmarked, supposedly. Oh, I've got it in go as well. Let's move that to there, because that's where I'm using it. Uh, right, uh, we'll keep this for the moment because I need to work out how to get this info. I'm going to go here. I'm going to look at event.
Okay. So some of this stuff, unfortunately, is going to be Yeah, that probably isn't going to help. Um, okay. Let's see if we can... work out what this is then. So, S-U-U-V. Summary of types. So S is a string. Unsigned gin sometime. And then with V variant. So what does variant mean? Does it have any kind of way to get what info's in it? What does it just mean? It's a bag of bits that we have to determine what's going on. All right. <laughs> the type of the value is part of the value itself. Hmm. Variants are more short as a signature of the contents, which must be a single complete type, followed by a marshaled value with the type given by the signature. The variant has the same one byte alignment as a signature, which means the alignment padding before a variant is never needed. Okay. The use of variants must not cause a total message depth to be larger than 64, including other container type sections. Okay. So T in this example. Here you went. No, okay. Hmm. So this is going to be fun. Hopefully the go debus thing will um, help me destruct this better. So
I'm getting this kind of like event type or something there. A couple of bits of detail. Some more stuff and then like a container. It's got the scissors so like an array, I guess. With a string value. We do new. That's going to be interesting to sort out. I'm going to have to do that some other time. I just need to kind of get on with my day. Yep. Okay. Well, it's good that we got this far. Um, but I need to do stuff here. So let's. Um, Let's do some to do's. To do. Um, create struct for rent. I'll do for the moment because that's going to be hard enough <laughs> trying to work out what's what oh. don't know what happened there okay yeah That's going to be interesting working out what bits go where. But you can see that it was like S U U. Then B, but. In theory, but so is that is all that part of the variant? Yeah, I must stop. Okay, I'm too too engrossed in that. I could uh, I could spend some time looking at that, but I won't. Okay, um, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, you take care.